um, whatever I'm going to say now is um, actually just a collection of what many other people said. Um, so um, I'm part of, of the Blood 3000 Collective, which is quite a large group of people. Um, so all I'm going to go through is just maybe my collection of what hundreds of people said. Um, yeah. So, yeah, as I said, I'm part of the Blood 3000 Collective. We are a group of people um, uh, who started something like a magazine in, in Berlin uh, in 2014. Um, we started like as a circle of musicians, musicologists around uh, the free improvised music scene, like free jazz, noise music. Um, we were a little bit bored of the contemporary music scene, especially the written one. Um, so we started this kind of platform for us to discuss maybe and see what we can do about it. Um, but we also preferred like a more fragmentary form of publication. So actually the magazine only consists of impulses, of, of fragments. We didn't want people to publish articles like, this is my opinion, uh, this, is, this is all, read it. But more like, okay, I have a question, I don't really know, maybe you can help me. So other people could answer in the in the uh, uh, upcoming issues. Uh, we experimented with this. We also said we publish everything. So, um, uh, yeah, like people could, uh, people could just um, write whatever they wanted to write. Um, oh, wait, let me see if I can. Yeah, this is, a, this is one of the issues. Um, yeah, they are self-made. Um, yeah. Let me quickly see if I can figure out how, ah, yeah, this works, now. perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, this is Blatt 3000, this is Klaus, he helps us printing it in the basement for very cheap money. Uh, this is, yeah, one more issue, one more issue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is uh, Laura, me, Malte and Sam uh, are giving a talk. Usually we talk four people at the same time. This is us uh, meeting other collectives, discussing uh, things we learned uh, in our magazines, uh, in the things we were doing. Um, this is Kunstmusik Sister, a feminist uh, separatist composer collective from Sweden. Yeah, this is us working in, in the living room. <laughs> um, yeah, basically what we do is uh, publish that magazine. At one point, uh, we realized, okay, it's kind of it's kind of boring to only write and talk. We also want to do things, so we started building our own um, festival, um, which was called uh, Verantwortung 3000. Now there's some more pictures. <laughs> exactly, Verantwortung 3000. Verantwortung 3000 was like a um, festival we put up in 2016 on the countryside around Berlin. Um, once again, we come from a music background, so for us it was first of all just, just a music festival. We, um, we decided that we are not interested in any sort of curation, so we just said this festival is self-curated, everyone can curate the festival themselves. Uh, the only thing we are providing is a platform with which people can share resources, uh, use locations and then program their own events in it. Um, the first software we wrote, like for Unfortunate 3000, is just a Ruby on Rails application, quite simple. Um, you could select venues, uh, resources, people were bringing, like instruments, um, and then put up your, put up your event. I, go, I don't want to go too much into the detail of this platform since there's some duplication with all the other platforms. You will see later what's, what I mean. Um, but basically, um, yeah, it became this. It became this very chaotic, very beautiful uh, one week, and um, uh, we were yeah, we were just like hanging out um, and yeah, doing doing various things. Like it was a complete. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many events happened. Like around around 100 events um, of different kinds. Um, we then realized, okay, our magazine is actually becoming more some sort of reflection tool, like after this festival we had so many questions in, in curation, in frameworks, in how we want to deal with frameworks, like the festival as a framework, the university as a framework, the 
um, uh, juries as a framework, uh, money as a framework, like all of these, all of these questions suddenly came up because we, we started to explore these spaces and say, okay, what if we, what if we have some sort of experimental setup of reality? Right? Like we put up a festival which is run through that platform, and the platform gives us some strange options. It's more like like some sort of game you put yourself in and it has some strange rules and and you have to deal with this and it might might be a little bit um, um, complicated to you to do it or to or to to um, to proceed to what you usually want to do like organize an event but actually it also makes you think about reality and uh, yeah we had so many questions after that that our magazines then actually became more like reflection uh, like a reflection um, medium, so we we started to just like discuss the festivals in the, in these magazines, and then work on the next festival, um, which was called Hoffnung 3000. Um, Hoffnung 3000 was uh, quite different. It was uh, in the middle of Berlin, uh, so before Verantwortung 3000, we had it kind of in, in an isolated experimental environment. We really just put this whole structure into the city. Uh, we developed a completely new platform for this. This time it's like a Node.js Express uh, backend with a React fr uh, front end. Um, I'm going to show it to you. Um, and this, with this uh, platform, we actually started to experiment with decentralization, not in the technical sense, but in, a, in the sense that we said anything can be a venue in the city. You just have a GPS position, this is a venue. And people can mark these places themselves, program events. Uh, so the festival happened all around. Actually, people started to use it outside of Berlin. So we had contributions from Sardinia, from Tokyo, from London, uh, also via stream. So people just started to join the platform and contributed their events. Um, this is the press conference we gave on Tempelhofer Feld. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some videos you can watch on YouTube about the festival. Um, this is like this was one of the the, the headquarters where you could get beer and uh, breakfast. There were concerts happening all around, so we had like living situations in living rooms of other people's. So you know you you offered your living room, and then other people programmed events in it. For example, yeah, this is the platform itself. I make I give you a quick run through. It's um, yeah, basically consists of two like uh, menus. You have the sidebar to the right, uh, the main navigation to the left. What you can already see here is some sort of like activity stream, and it is actually um, like there. You see the activities of some people like Lost Lobster created a new event gestures, xerophobic Sanapus updated an event, convolusive clown anemone fish created a new event, and so on and so on. There's already weird usernames. This is one thing we experimented with. It was um, anonymity. So we decided it doesn't matter what you who you are, uh, what sort of career you have, what sort of gender, what sort of uh, skin color. We just want people to collaborate and. You can do this through the platform, but you will never know who this person is, except of when you meet this person. And then on top, uh, your username changes all the time with every resource and every, every, every action you did on the platform. So you can't trace people. Um, um, we have the random meeting feature. Like down here, you could read man random uh, people in a random place at a random time. Um, but basically what you do is uh, you go to their markt and you just put in uh, resources you can, you can bring, and a resource is actually not defined, it can be anything. So people said, okay, I'm going to bring a PA system, I'm very good in transcribing text, English, I bring a cooking plate, a soldering iron, uh, I'm a saxophone player, a cellist, I have some speakers, I bring some, I'm, I can make a DJ set, uh, music stands whatsoever, or I'm really good at searching things in Japanese on the internet. Um, okay, then there's places, yeah? So everyone can just create a place. I can click on create place, select some pictures, describe what is going on there. Um, and I can just say, okay, it's a GPS position. So uh, I just mark on the map, like where is that place? Uh, it's loading right now, the map. Yeah, so we can just say, okay, here's a place. Um, yeah, let's just put it here or here or here or somewhere else in the world. This is Berlin right now, so yeah. But yeah, we can have a place here or here can put in a regular address, or this is a quite interesting also for the upcoming platform, uh, it can be a virtual place. So something which just happens in your head. 
Um, you, uh, there's also like some convenient features, like is it a public or private event? So you just want to do something internally, uh, or is it? Um, you can also define the slot size. So you can say this is actually a space with a slot size of 14 hours and 25 minutes. This only gives you four slots over the festival time, which means okay, this is prob this already defines upon the politics of that space. Is it an exhibition place? You know, you want to build up an exhibition within 24 hours, or is it something where you only can book a slot for of 10 minutes? This already defines a little bit upon what's going on in that place. Here I can just select okay, don't use these slots because I'm not home. Uh, so you can you can also um, disable slots. Um, yeah, and then you just create an event. So you go on the calendar. This is like, these are all things which happened then during the time. Um, um, yeah, people were creating their events. Uh, I can create my own now. Upload images, give it a title. Where does it take place? I select my place. Um, okay. Uh, here in the sports park. Select the time slot. Yeah like five in the morning, uh, is it public, is it private, which resources do I need? Okay, uh, I need the disposable camera and myself, you, someone created a resource called you. Okay, I wanna have that and then save event and then it's created. All the people who own these resources get a message now by an animal and uh, this is like uh, then solved through a conversation with these people. Like, where can I pick it up? When can I meet you to pick it up? Um, uh, when can I come to your apartment or to your place? Okay, this is Hoffnung 3000. Um, uh, so um, uh, it's um, uh, I, I, we've written something like a manual. You can install it for your own festivals. It's all on GitHub as well. Um, there's actually uh, collectives using it now in London, like entire university They're working on changing to Hoffman 3000 as their platform. Um, exactly. And so I've written like this handbook, uh, how to use the platform and how to install it. It's actually a one-click install on Heroku, or uh, if you want to put it up yourself manually, there's also like a little manual. Okay, so this is Hoffman 3000. Um, uh, we, yeah, we experimented there already with decentralization in this sense. Anonymity, in some other sense, technically that's all not true. Uh, philosophically it was, and it was quite interesting. So this again resulted in lots of Blood 3000 issues, discussing, discussing, us meeting uh, collectives, other people. Uh, we also started to realize, okay, this is not only a music festival anymore. We're actually talking about, like, um, we actually want to talk to people who come from more activist backgrounds, from more like philosophical backgrounds, from um, from different sorts of uh, areas which are actually also very interesting, uh, interested in decentralization and self-organization and in anarchy and in all different sorts of organizing and um, giving space for chaos, for uh, plurality, for, for diversity. Um, so yeah, um, I wanted to read from, the, from our um, because now Blatt 3000 actually transitioned to an association in Berlin, the Liebe Chaos Verein, uh, which is kind of connected to what I just said. It's an association now consisting of a wider group of people from very different backgrounds, from art background, from performance art background, from uh, programming backgrounds. So actually what we want to do is like extend this whole thing into a more, um, much more diverse form, not only focusing on music. Um, I wanted to read something out of the constitution, but I think there's not so much time, maybe, but um, yeah, let, let me just go to Panda, uh, Pietro Panda. Um, Pietro Panda itself is um, a new protocol we're developing on top of the Scuttlebutt, secure Scuttlebutt stack. Um, it is something in our minds since already two years, and also based on all these platforms you already built before. Um, it comes comes basically from this, from our tendency to, do, to, to decentralize things. We realized, okay, there's actually these protocols and they might help us in achieving that, not only in a technical way, but also there is some, there is some side effects or features in this which, which might actually affect our thinking, our org way of organizing, our arts, our, the things we're gonna produce there. Um, so there's been 
some meetings uh, in the last weeks, in the last months, where we discussed this thing and asked ourselves, what do we find interesting in this? What would we like to have? Uh, this is always how we start building these, building these platforms. Um, okay, so Peer to Panda. Um, uh, yeah, this is the this is so far the how you write it. Um, okay, so first of all, I, I I will talk a little bit about uh, peer to peer technology. I I know there's many experts here probably know about it much more than me, but uh, I will still talk a little bit about it. I hope it's not boring, but basically um, um, peer to peer works just by generating a cryptographic key pair, and this is this is enough to identify you with whatever you're going to say in the future. Um, this is quite interesting. So in the moment I open my laptop and I open the peer to Panda page, yeah, let's say it like that, uh, I generate that key pair and now this is me. That's already quite interesting if you think about the uh, anonymous animal, uh, animal avatars we had before. Like, who are you? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not really important. Like, let's let's just be a key pair and then you can interact with that universe. So all of these like circles are users or key pairs or uh, whatever right now. That's quite interesting because now suddenly it's just not only a user, it can also be a collective sharing a key pair or you know, like any group of people or maybe a bot, like some sort of um, actually a computer program. Yeah? So these are all now actors within the peer to panda universe. That's already quite interesting. Um, what we're going to use um, is related to the secure scuttlebutt stack, uh, which you probably heard in other peer to peer protocols as well as the append only lock. So people just broadcast what they want to do. Yeah? They just say, OK, I want to create a resource. So this is a message you append to your, to your lock. Yeah? And the lock you only have for yourself. This is something you just maintain on your computer uh, uh, or yeah, wherever your key pair is, um, is able to, to, um, to sign this sort of, sort, of, sort of message. So I just have this append only look. I just say, I create this resource. And you already hear it in the name. It's append only. So I just add messages on top of each other. Yeah? So I just add messages on top of messages on top of messages. Everyone for themselves. And that's already quite beautiful because um, Think about it, and that's actually a picture from uh, from um, CFT from a professor from Basel, uh, which I found very nice. Uh, you have to think about it as, as some water, and you just throw a stone into that water, and it causes some waves. Yeah. Uh, now you can think of every user as one of these stones falling into the water, and the waves just spreading out. Yeah. This is broadcasting. It's like the wave will just spread out, and it will eventually hit some other some other users, some other devices, yeah? So think about it as some sort of sea of just like water waves and eventually they will hit each other. That's all also quite beautiful. It doesn't, there's no server involved saying like, no, this is not valid content, this is not okay. It's just like everyone says whatever they wanna say and eventually it will hit other people. Um, yeah, okay, so this is like append only locks in themselves already quite interesting, philosophically speaking. Um, Okay, now we have to make sure that we can read each other's append-only logs. So we are right now all around the world. <laughs> like these append-only logs, they're somewhere stored on our computers, yeah? You see them here. Uh, we're going to add some messages to them, yeah? They grow, they grow, they grow. Uh, now we also need to do something like replication. We have to share these append-only logs with each other. So there's another protocol which does that, like sharing, sharing these logs. So, you know. So we have like all of these logs from different people now, and we can send them to each other and see what they said. Um, that's also interesting because this means, depending on your internet connection, who was online when, and so on, everyone sees a little bit uh, of a different festival, maybe. Yeah. So if you think, go back to our festival setting, and people broadcasting their messages, you might not see that because this person is offline right now and is not able to send you what this person just said. So depending where you are in the world and how you interact with the platform, everyone has a completely different view on that festival. That's quite radical. So you can already see where, where I'm going. This is not a festival for, you know, it's not a big rock festival for 200,000 people we're talking about. This is really, this is really something else. So yeah, what is a festival where everyone sees something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, 
the data types we are using are also very generic and quite simple. We have the users or the key pairs I just talked about. We have resources. This is similar to Hoffnung 3000. Yeah, the PA system I brought, the, the uh, like my skill to play saxophone or whatsoever. These are all resources people created. Yeah, the pink resource is on, like was created by the by the pink user. This we can verify through this generated key pair. Um, and then I create events, and an event is nothing but a set of resources. Yeah? So this event requests two resources right now. And a resource can also be a location, for example, a venue, a place somewhere in the world, a GPS position. Yeah? Um, yeah, so people create their, res uh, their events and uh, claiming resources. Um, and there is some sort of um, resource allocation strategy happening, so you can't allocate a resource when it's already been used at the same time by someone else. Um, I'm going to talk about how this works. <laughs> um, that's, that's one way to see this graph, actually. I, I talked to some people, and they were very right about saying, OK, user, resource, event, this sounds horrible. Like, you need a difference different semantics for this. This is, this is too already predefining what it is. Um, so I, I actually searching right now. I've been thinking about this for some days. I can't come up with any better words. Uh, there will be better words. Um, but it's like, start already thinking about it. What is a resource? Yeah, a resource can be, I mean, I, I made a little bit of a list here. Like, what, what, what could it be? It could be like a, a 3D position in a, in a 3D space. Yeah, you can say, okay, a resource is a location somewhere in a computer game. Uh, let's meet all there. I have a sound installation here tonight. Um, or a resource can be money. Yeah, I mean, you could think about a festival which which um, has some money pool and people claim these resources um, to realize their events. Um, uh, so resources can be can also be very abstract things. Yeah, like doesn't have to be. It can be a, a link to the dot, so some sort of dot page or some dot resource. Or um, so it's quite quite hard to define resource. Really, it can also be people or like. It's, so you see, it's a problematic word. Um, and also an event. What is an event? Like um, maybe we have a you have an event which lasts over five years, um, or you want to run a festival over over 10 years. Yeah? Um, OK, so this is, this is, you see, this is work in progress. This is not really well defined yet, but you see the, the possibilities of this sort of setup. Um, yeah, um, this also is related to, um, to uh, the clients themselves. Uh, since peer to panda is only defined by that protocol and by these data types, um, you can build whatever sort of client on top of that. Yeah? For our setting, it's quite straightforward. It's like Hoffnung 3000 interface on top of peer to panda You can imagine how this will look like. You create resources, you create events, you have a calendar. Okay, this is quite straightforward. Um, I, we thought about some uh, user, user experience and interface parts uh, since we moved this now into a peer to peer world. Um, and we will definitely have people using this which don't know anything about the technical background, and that's also not important. Um, we still want to give them some sort of feedback, like, okay, this is different than what you're used to. You have to, you have to, um, you have to behave a little bit differently. And one thing we thought about was maybe, okay, we have some sort of replication health state indicator. Yeah, it's like, how well am I? replicating my append-only log with others right now. How much do I help spreading what I just said? Yeah, this is some sort of indicator maybe. OK, how safe is it that my message is somewhere out there? Um, maybe the last activity of the person doing something, is it like one year ago, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go to that event? <laughs> uh, is it like, uh, uh, and then also the most important thing is since an event is just a set of resources, um, and people confirm, this, this I forgot to say, we go to, go to this later, but people confirm uh, if someone can get this resource or not. Um, you can also just directly indicate it publicly and say, okay, this event claimed three resources and two of them are all, got already confirmed. This gives you some sort of safety if, you, if the event will actually happen or will be realizable. Um, yeah, so, th so you can imagine you open this thing and someone requested uh, my favorite book for the panda party and you can just say, okay, 
you can get it or you can't. Um, you can also think about other clients, for example, uh, like some sort of more professional client for collectives, yeah, which have, um, which have, I don't know, like uh, 20 PA systems, yeah, like some sort of like there's like a big big event. They have like lots of gear. Uh, they might need more like a dashboard kind of interface to look to organize all of these resources, seeing where they are right now, um, in what state are they? Yeah, like you can somehow think about that. What I find the most interesting, and it's actually also part then of the peer to panda protocol, it, it will be, is uh, some sort of API to, to accept or reject resource requests. This is quite interesting, and this is also where, where you can do many, many great things. So in the moment you get this request, um, it's up to you how you're going to confirm it. You can do something very simple like uh, first come, first serve. Yeah, that's can automatically just happen. Like the, the program itself checks, okay, is the resource free? Yes, give it to that person, otherwise don't, you don't. Uh, you can have something like randomness, yeah? Decide randomly if you wanna give it to that person or not. Um, you can also have uh, other things like play that computer game first, um, watch that movie first, and we're gonna give you the resource. Please send me your favorite poem. Um, or you have an AI deciding if you get the resource or not based on whatever sort of, of, of da data it, it, it learned on before. Yeah, so you can have some kind of fun festival setting suddenly um, where uh, actually people join in with different sorts of clients, different sorts of authorization logics. Yeah? So, I mean, if you want to have a very traditional festival setting, you can say, I have a festival ticket, this is a festival resource, you have to pay for it, and then I, off then I conf accept it, you know? I don't know, that's quite boring, but if you want to do that. Um, um, yeah, so, so you can see there is some, some things. Uh, yeah, you can also replace this, this uh, user again with some sort of bot, so you can also have like artificial agents on the, on the peer to panda protocol. Um, you know, like some, some, some entity creating resources, creating events. You could think of a bot which scrapes events from Facebook and remixes them and just spawns them into peer to panda yes? and then you and maybe you get requested suddenly and said okay you have to be part of that event <laughs> um, um, I don't know make a make a manifestation based on on all the, all the things we found on Facebook um, on this on this event in this location um, or use completely other platforms like reddit or some RSS feeds and feed that then into the feed this and as some sort of event data yeah um, like some, someone said, uh, this, this is actually like true decentralization maybe because then you really leave your protocol and start just taking data from completely different protocols. I uh, find that quite interesting. Um, yeah, for the festival itself, I mean, we have some ideas on how, to, how we want to use this or like what, what, how, how, how one could work with peer to panda One is like to hijack festivals, for example. Um, since, since it runs just in your browser, you open it, uh, you have, you have peer to panda. You just generated your key pair. You find other peers around you. Uh, you could enter an actual festival and start running your own festival within it. Um, there are already venues. There are already resources you can use in some way. So it can be quite a fun game to hijack festivals uh, with peer to panda. Uh, another thing is, which I also find interesting. Um, since, since it just runs all the time and there's peers who can pop up from all around the world, you can also have some sort of call for festivals or a call for collectives, not a call for individuals, but actually say, we want to call for any sort of group who wants to do something on Peer to Panda, like some sort of like a, a universe they want to start with their own clients, their own... Um, uh, their own approach to how they, to resources to authentic uh, like to authorizing these resources, um, and maybe just define a time spot in the year and just say, okay, this is the week, and we are going to start using this now. Um, you can, we in, with Blatt 3000, like uh, Sam said it quite nicely, it's um, constant belonging, sudden bursts. Yeah, what are sudden bursts? Like constant belonging is maybe the protocol, but the sudden bursts are all these events happening uh, all around the world based on this protocol. Um, so yeah, what is what is a festival? It could actually happen all the time. Um, yeah, or make a call for AI curators, like ask ask teams to contribute maybe some sort of 
uh, logic which um, autonomously uh, curates a festival. That's also maybe interesting. And also what I like is like you get surprised. Um, it's not closed. Yeah, you, uh, like what happened with Hafnon 3000, people from, from Japan so suddenly made a performance and streamed that to, to us. Um, like these things are very beautiful, I find. Um, um, to not have a curation, to not have some sort of border deciding you're part of the festival or not. Also that it's quite a radical indifference between who is a participant, who is a visitor. I mean, if I want to see the calendar of the festival, I'm automatically already a participant because I generated my key pair. Uh, so I could actually also start creating an event if I want to. I can also just look at the calendar. That's also fine. Um, yeah, and of course it gives interesting features for archiving festivals, for documenting festivals. You can think about a client which gathers all of this data and then generates a fanzine out of it automatically <laughs> or you know like some some or like it's just it's 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 already stored on your computer so when the festival is over you close your laptop uh, and you have it on your laptop um, um, and you can use that data then to to do something out of this um, so it's also interesting for archiving yeah. um, but I think generally I think uh, also maybe to close this um, I think what, what I find the most interesting is this is not made for big festivals. This is really like, uh, this is for your local group, um, experimenting with different forms of organizing, with trying things out, with building, building fun, fun things to, to, to learn, to learn about what does it mean to decide upon uh, certain aspects of the frameworks we're surrounded with. Um, what does it mean if we can hack these frameworks while we are running the festival? Uh, um, what, what, what does it mean to, to, to define these logics while the festival is running? And um, that's cool. Like that's, 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 uh, this is the most important thing, to be together, to be surrounded by your best friends and, um, and put yourself into these situations and learn from each other and talk to each other. Um, but still, you can have other groups doing it somewhere in the world and exchange. So it's not really only local, but it is kind of a small first, local first, offline first uh, idea, which, which I find quite beautiful and also important. Um, yeah, so this is, this is Peer to Panda for now. I mean, uh, there is a repository about this as well on GitHub. Um, it's the design document with many aspects I was just talking about. There's also a Nextcloud instance with uh, of the association I was just talking about where we uploaded all the meetings, protocols, and um, uh, idea documents and so on, partly of what I just talked about. Uh, I will share this soon, uh, also on, on the, in the repository. I think there's an issue where I already posted the link, but um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much. So we have about 10 minutes for questions, if there are any for Andreas. Does anyone have a burning first question? Um, in the case of the festival specifically, given that all users are anonymous, although um, obviously people are meeting up, but how is there any way to protect against either malicious usage of the system, um, like people creating resources that they don't intend to provide or locations that they you know, are not accessible really? Um, and in addition, like uh, just malicious usage in real life of like people showing up to a place and not being respectful of the location. Yeah. Uh, I have a very, I have a very boring answer to this, which is, um, I mean, the systems we provided before also didn't, didn't really prevent malicious behavior, but we also haven't had it. Um, I think this, uh, this is also what I mean. We're not, I think we're taking some freedom in not being a company which needs to provide some, you know, some regulations or some sort of safety um, things. This is an art project, and we, we're doing it anyways. And actually. Um, uh, technology doesn't save you from, or like this is what we learned, like the technology doesn't make it a better festival or a better setup. It, it's, it's one way to think about it, but um, 
what's more important is everything around it. Like, uh, how do you announce these things? How do you, what sort of, what sort of instances do you have physically, like in place, people you can talk to, uh, people which care about other people. Um, um, uh, you know, like all of these things, they are much more important than the actual technological um, um, part of it. That's at least what our experience was in the past. That's, um, and this led to the, uh, the festival itself kind of being a place where, which felt safe. Um, but I know that this is not a good technical answer. Um, the problem you have actually also in other protocols like uh, uh, Scuttlebutt in general, there's not you know, there's, there can be malicious behavior. It just, uh, right now it's just solved by ignoring these peers and just saying like, I don't replicate the data with you. You seem to be, have some sort of malicious behavior. Um, but it's not a, I, I don't think it's a very good solution so far. But um, yeah, but no, it's, it's an important question, but uh, somehow we're taking, right now we're taking the very naive approach of just solving it outside of the technology. Yeah. Because otherwise we would need to deal with, I don't know, blockchain or something, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Are there any further questions? Yeah? It's not a question. It's not a question, actually, but a proposal. Uh, because you were talking about the terminology that you use, that you should somehow change it, I, w I have a proposal. So you should change resource. If you combine it with availability, you could name it enabler. So in this, ca in this case, someone who gives a, re a resource is a resource provider, whereas someone who offers an enabler becomes kind of an active participant also in the event. Mm. So it's interesting to, yeah. to see you. it this way. Yeah, I write it down. <laughs> and a question from, oh. Um, I really liked um, a bit of that provocation at the beginning that you raised of what is a festival as a framework. And it, it seems like in this latest iteration, Pita Panda, there's sort of a way that you might be dissolving it. Because I could sort of see the durational part of having a festival um, that and it bleeding into real life. And I think there's maybe a way to play with that. But I wonder if, if you could see that making things harder? I guess, I'm not sure. I think sometimes it's special when you bring together people for a set amount of time together. I say this having just tried to organize a conference <laughs> that you're all at. Um, and I wonder what happens uh, if you lose that or, or if you can play with that, because it seems something is interesting there. I mean, what I just talked about was quite, uh, quite technical. Um, and also, I mean, we're not very many programmers. I'm one, um, and there's two more. Uh, but 90% um, are people who are not very technical, uh, but they are very interested in exactly these questions of like their curation, um, uh, togetherness, uh, how, to, how you save spaces, um, all of these things, um, uh, how we want to announce things. Um, and um, so, yeah, the discourse is actually happening on many, many levels. Uh, I had a very a relatively technical introduction now into Peer to Panda, but um, if another person would stand here, this person would maybe only talk about how do we want to announce this, how, how, do, how do we want to provide um, uh, a beautiful place and, and beautiful places uh, where, we can, where we can work on this. Um, yeah, and I think this is still happening, like with whatever protocol we're going to use in the end. Um, and this also will lead to... Um, yeah, at least the local groups meeting and 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 being together and working together on uh, running that festival. Yeah. Yep. Are there uh, facilities for asking for help or like encouraging collaboration between people? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Definitely. Um, so I'm I'm um, I'm quite new in the peer-to-peer -peer sphere. Like maybe a year ago, I started. Um, um, so I'm I'm not very well experienced. I'm starting to look into the Scuttlebutt protocol right now. Um, uh, I have help from, uh, or we have help from from people of, also from the Scuttlebutt community. Um, and uh, right now, concretely speaking, we are three developers, uh, all based in Berlin, um, and. We're planning on running a festival next year. 
so until then, we want to have something like which we can which we can work with already. Um, uh, and if not, then at least there will be something small we want to experiment with and then run a bit run a bigger thing like the year after. Um, yeah, but definitely, I mean, this is also. I try to learn right now about what is a good, healthy way to um, publicly uh, work on, on open source. I mean, everything I do is open source, but I never done something in this size, maybe. So I'm, I'm quite happy to hear about people's experiences, what, you know, what sort of, what sort of structure is like best practice for these things. I try to learn from the Dutch community, actually. Um, I like how they share their meeting protocols and these sort of things. Um, yeah, but um, generally, uh, definitely, any help is very much appreciated. Yeah.